Now we're going to move on to a new topic called curve sketching. Here we're going to uh, learn how to use calculus to find the graphs of several functions. So the first topic, uh, as you can see I've written down here, is on extrema, um, which includes maximum and minimum. Okay, so there are two types of extrema, absolute and relative. And we're going to uh, talk about absolute extrema first. So the absolute maximum of a function on an interval is the largest value of the function on that interval. And the same goes with uh same goes for minimum. The absolute minimum of a function on an interval is the smallest value of the function on the interval. Right? So a more technical definition would be F has an absolute max at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the, its domain. Okay, and if you want the definition for a minimum, you just replace this with min and you switch this inequality sign around. So let me give you a graph here. So if I were to ask you, what's the absolute max and min on this closed interval, one comma, a negative one comma three? First of all, what does this closed brackets mean? Um, these closed brackets mean that the endpoints are included in this domain here. So negative one and three are included in its domain. So uh, we're allowed to say that yes, uh, negative x equals negative 1 is, is the function's absolute minimum, and in this case, roughly, x equals 1 is, ap is the function's absolute maximum. Okay, but what if I change the question to say, now find the absolute maximum and minimum in the open interval uh, from negative 1 to 3? Well then, negative 1 and 3 are no longer in domain, so then, I would not be allowed to say that uh, x equals negative 1 is the absolute minimum. I can still say that x equals positive 1 is the absolute max, but then in this case, then there would be no more, then there's no absolute minimum in this interval here. Why? Well, um, I could say, well, um, negative 0.999 is the absolute minimum, and then you could say, no, it's negative point nine 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 and then I could go on and say no it's negative point nine 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 so we can always get closer to x equals negative one so in this case there's no absolute minimum but there is an absolute maximum right so uh, just one more thing so if I were to give you this graph now Is there an absolute maximum minimum? Okay, so this is an open circuit here, so this point is not included in the domain. Uh, the function is not defined at this point. So yes, there is an absolute minimum, but there's no absolute maximum. Why? Because we can always get closer to this point. Alright, so the extreme value theorem says that It says that if f is continuous, so the first requirement is that f is continuous, and the second requirement is that we have to be working with a closed interval. So if, we're, if we satisfy these two conditions, then f has an absolute maximum and also has an absolute minimum. Okay, so let's, well, this idea, um, why does it have to be continuous? Well, here we saw that uh, even though it is a closed interval, the function was not continuous, and it just happened to be that had it been continuous, the absolute maximum would have been there. But since it's not, since that, since the function is not defined at that point, then, um, then we don't have an absolute maximum. 
Also, um, for example, in this case, if we have an asymptote here, we don't have an absolute max or min because we can always go higher. And um, I don't know. But note that this, however, um, keep in mind that um, a non-continuous function can still have an absolute extrema. However, it's not guaranteed to have one by the theorem. Okay. So, if the function is continuous and we're working with a closed interval, then that function has to have an absolute maximum, maximum and minimum. Okay, so now let's move on to relative extrema. So, a relative max. A relative max, um, a function has a relative maximum if that value is relatively higher than its surrounding values. And the same thing for a relative minimum. A relative, a relative minimum occurs um, when a value is lower than its surrounding values. What do I mean exactly by that? So, this is a relative maximum and this is a relative minimum. This is a relative maximum because it's higher than its surrounding values, than, it, than the surrounding values. And this is a relative minimum because it's lower than its surrounding values. Right, so you can think of at relative, sorry, you can think of relative maximums as peaks or hills, and you can think of relative minimums as um, valleys. Valleys. So a uh, mathematical definition would be f has a relative max at x equals c if there is an interval. That contains that contains C in which F of C is going to be greater than or equal to F of X for all X in that interval. Okay, so this is make sense, yeah, right? Because you can here we can pick an interval. You can say choose this interval here, and this interval contains um, this point, and you can see that indeed this relative maximum is larger than all the surrounding values. And the same thing for the relative minimum. We can choose say this this interval here, and this value is smaller than all the surrounding values. So what's the difference between absolute and relative extrema? An absolute value is the largest in the domain, and a relative extrema. Okay, it's going to be smaller or larger than its surrounding values. Oh yeah, and for this, a relative minimum is the same thing, just flip this inequality sign around. Okay, so just one last thing. So I have this, then this is going to be a relative min, this is going to be a relative max, this is going to be an absolute min, and this point here is going to be an absolute max. Okay, so absolute min, relative max, relative min, absolute max. Could you technically say that this is also a relative min? Uh, yeah, good, right, based on definition. But, it would, so, absolutes, all absolute extremas are also relative extremas, but for practical purposes, for practical purposes, we just label them absolute, right? Because we want to know absolute relatives and mids. Sorry, the absolute maximums and mids. Okay, and um, okay, that's all I have. See you next lesson.